I know what you're thinking. Goodness me, there's a lot going on there. Correct. So today, good morning, hello. I want to talk to you about purpose. Purpose. What is it? Why should you care? Uh, you might be doing a coaching uh, program with me, in which case you should care because it's kind of the backbone. Um, I tend to work with driven, high achievers who might not have ever thought about the concept of purpose before, and that might be something that's missing for them, and it's a pretty fundamental thing to be missing. So let's start with what it is. Purpose in the simplest definition, and what I find the most useful definition, is your highest goal. And the highest goal for all of us is the same, to connect to the highest within yourself as consistently as often as possible. It is impossible to do so all the time. Let's forget that. For the overachievers out there, people like me, recovering, addic recovering addicts to achievement, we're never going to be perfect. And for the perfectionist, you're never going to be perfect. The idea is to connect to your high, the highest within yourself as often as possible and making that your highest priority, your highest goal. Might sound a bit fluffy, uh, but the reason that we focus on purpose is because it's the same for everyone. Um, and if you can focus on your purpose enough um, and really start to understand that, and I'll teach you a really quick five second way to, to, to come to your purpose. It makes figuring out your mission, which is unique to you, your, the, the reason you are here on earth, uh, a lot easier. And if you've got a purpose, if you've got a mission, um, if you've got a vision for what's possible in the future, you know your values and you know what gives you worth, then life becomes a hell of a lot easier, a hell of a lot more flowy, a hell of a lot more enjoyable. Uh, and you tend to achieve what you wanted to achieve uh, before you knew all of this as a byproduct. Let me give you an example. Me, I didn't know any of those big five words that I just said, purpose, mission, values, vision, worth. I didn't really understand what any of those mean meant. I just really wanted to achieve stuff. I just really wanted to be the best. I just really wanted to prove my parents, my teachers, my peers, my boss, my clients, that I was the best. Didn't really know why. Just seemed like the right thing to do. That's what everyone gets taught growing up, right? Wrong. Um, I became stressed. I became strung out. I became kind of miserable without really realizing it. I would numb myself with um, booze and distractions and all sorts of crazy behavior. Uh, and I fundamentally wasn't happy. I wasn't at peace. I wasn't balanced. Um, I wasn't really optimistic. I was very self-focused um, and ended up having a breakdown. And what happened when I discovered, I say I discovered, with the help of a coach, uh, I discovered purpose. I discovered my purpose, which is the same as everyone else's, to connect to the highest within myself. And I also discovered... Um, I've started to work on what my mission, my unique mission might be. You know, where do my unique talents, capabilities and skills fit in with what the world or what those around me need most? A mission. Then I was, I, I was able to reconnect to the level of, let's say, efficiency and productivity and effectiveness that I had before and, and in many ways sustain it, uh, sorry, outstrip the amount of efficiency I had before. But it was sustainable, it was consistent, it was enjoyable. I was having a good time delivering that mission. You know, I was more patient, more energetic. So I wanted to, you know, when I was, when I was waking up in the morning, I wasn't waking up and the first thing I said to myself was, what have I got to do today? What do I have to do today? What should I do today? I was asking myself, what do I want to do today? What do I get to do today? What would be fun if I did 
this today? How can I treat myself and others, serve myself and others most effectively today? And then at the end of the day, if I hadn't achieved it, I didn't feel guilty. I didn't beat myself up. I didn't give myself a hard time. I wasn't forcing myself to be efficient in every single moment of every single day. Because I knew my purpose. I knew my mission. And one day of not ticking everything off my to-do list didn't change who I was, didn't change what worth I brought to the world, didn't change that I was still on a mission. And it didn't change my ability to connect to what was highest within myself. What did change my ability to connect with what was highest within myself was when I felt guilty that I hadn't got what I should do done. Or when I felt afraid, when I felt like I needed to, I had to do something and I wouldn't do it. When I felt afraid that my perceived abilities or skill or resources, my perceived skill or resources or ability didn't match up to the perceived need that I had to achieve, the perceived thing that I should achieve. So that was a lot of rambling. Let's get to purpose. So I kind of start explaining there the why. Why would you bother with a purpose? Why would you bother connecting to the highest within yourself? Well, because without purpose, you're almost like a light bulb that hasn't been plugged in. You're not able to shine. If you want to turn on your light bulb to really shine, you need to be plugged in to a source of power to the mains and that source of power is your purpose. And when you are consistently, or more consistently at least, because you're not gonna be perfect, when you're more consistently living on purpose, when you're more consistently acting in line with what your higher self would do, the results are you might consistently start feeling some of these virtues, hope, love, creativity, joy, kindness, gratitude, peace, inner peace, peace of mind, as opposed to stress, balance, rested energy. You might feel courageous or you might be acting courageously, enthusiastic. You have your mojo. You feel alive. You feel alive. And that's what we're going for here, right? That's the, that's the point. That's the ultimate point. And when you feel your, those things, well, what does that give you on a real level? Well, I mean, those things are all real, first of all, but that gives you sustainability and consistency to be able to attack and achieve what you wanted to achieve before you understood about purpose, or before you cared. So it's a real have your cake and eat it. It allows you to optimize, achieve, be effective and efficient. But that's the byproduct. That is the byproduct of living a life on purpose. So that's why. That's why you'd bother. And what? Well, I've kind of told you what. And let me also tell you what it isn't, what purpose isn't. Because I made this mistake for many years. In trying to find my purpose... I went on a sort of holy grail chase. I've got to find the thing, enlightenment, uh, understanding. I've got to find what it is that truly lights me up. Now, for some people, and in some periods of their lives, and me at one point, um, there is a single answer, a, a misunderstanding, but a single answer to what is my purpose or what is my mission? Why am I here in the world? Because mission, there is a single answer to that. Purpose, there isn't. And, and I was confused at one point when I'd realized I hated my banking career, and it was a short career, when I realized that really working in an office probably wasn't going to be for me. I went in the opposite direction. I decided I had to be a musician to bring joy to others through music. <laughs> Hint, I was actually trying to bring a sense of 
mattering to my own life. I needed to matter. It wasn't really about other people. But I didn't know about all. I was, I was like 22. I was, I was naive. Um, but I went on, it was sort of this holy grail chase. I, like it had to be music. I had to find the purpose in making music. And that led to me being quite manic, really. Or not quite manic. It led to me being manic. Very up and down, up and down. I was so ambitious. I so wanted to make the music that people loved. I so wanted to be successful as a musician that I was consistently unsatisfied. I was never reaching this goal. I could never reach this goal because it was, it was such a holy grail. And I didn't take others. I was very self-involved, didn't really take into account others. And it was exhausting, ultimately. It was, that was the main thing, is I was exhausted. I burned out. So forget that. You know, purpose brings you back to something a lot simpler, which you already have within you right now, which is your higher self. So we know why we're doing this, to feel all these lovely virtues and as a byproduct, to create what you want in the world, to achieve, to be effective, to be efficient, to have fun. We know what it is. It's connecting to the highest part of yourself consistently. It's plugging yourself in so that you can shine. And it's definitely not. We know what it isn't. It's not chasing after this holy grail. It's not asking yourself a million questions about what your goal is or your ambition is in order to suddenly feel a sense of energy or passion. It's not that. That is that is more like an ambition is, is self-focused. And a mission is not. Anyway, we'll get to that. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's talk about how. How can you connect to the highest within yourself? Well, I believe that comes down to where you place your focus. My favourite group of philosophers, the, uh, the Stoics, actually that's a lie, I said they're my favourite group of philosophers, probably so I could sound interesting. I don't know my favourite group of philosophers, I might only know them, that might be the only group of philosophers I know. Anyway, they had a lovely distinction between what you can control and what you can't control. Can versus can't control. And in any situation, their go-to response, if you were afraid, stressed or in doubt, would be, I'll make a list. What's within my control in this situation? What's outside of my control? And there's one thing that is always inside your control or inside your influence, almost always anyway. And that's where you place your focus. Not much else is inside your control. How much energy you feel for something, how inspired you feel, whether you had a good night's sleep last night, um, how somebody reacts to what you're doing or saying or feeling, um, you know, what your emotions are quite often. Like a lot of these things are outside of your control. They might be a little bit within your influence, but they're outside of your control. So what is inside your control is where you place your focus. So how do we get you and me <laughs> to consistently focus on connecting with your higher self? Well, two major ways. One is you do a coaching program <laughs> with me. You might already be doing one, in which case good for you. You are outsourcing, you're partially outsourcing your commitment or your focus to your higher self. You're supercharging your ability by outsourcing to somebody who's been through the process themselves in a very deep way, picked it all apart, and then run through it with hundreds of other people. You know, someone who's as expert at keeping your focus on connecting with your higher self as you are at doing whatever your job is, your career is. And through, dis through knowing yourself, through discovering your values, your mission, um, your self-worth, uh, your sense of self-worth, your strengths, um, and then through creating a vision that really excites you and executing and moving towards it, 
you know, I'm taking the brunt of the structure of that. I'm creating the structure. I'm doing a lot of the mental heavy lifting. And then we do some mental heavy lifting within the sessions. And then you go and do. So you don't have to make nearly as many decisions. You can still focus on your career, on your life, on the, the day-to-day in the trenches work of your life. You can outsource a lot of the heavy lifting to me. And so we can supercharge and outsource that commitment to your higher self. So that's that's one way. Second way, this is just there's loads of ways, but this is my favorite and the easiest and it only takes five seconds and you can do it over and over again in your own time you don't need me is ask yourself i have a reminder on my phone i have a, this alarm that goes off once every hour um and on some days once every 20 minutes it's just a little just makes a little noise a little ping uh actually it's a cuckoo and that's my reminder to ask myself what would the highest version of me do in this moment or what would the highest version of me do in response to whatever I'm going through right now I got a call from my insurers saying someone had made a claim against me the other day difficult situation what would the highest version of me do in response to that situation or what maybe, you, you know, you might be better doing this at the end or the beginning of each day when you're journaling, maybe. What would the highest version of me do over the next week? Or if you know you have a challenging situation coming up tomorrow, what would the highest version of me do in response to this or that? And then you can review at the end of the next day, you can review, did I do that? Did I act in that way? Yes, no, why not? You won't always be perfect. So there you go, that's something really simple. And because I work with majority overachievers, this becomes important. It can't always be, and it shouldn't always be, about you achieving. The highest version, the highest version of yourself is not always going to be hustling. You know, do an extra two hours in the office. Um, you know, push yourself. That is not what the, you know, the highest version of you is, is also compassionate, well-rested, courageous. And for many of the people that I coach, actually the least courageous thing you can do is keep whipping yourself using the stick to, to motivate yourself, is to go just one bit more. I just need to do one more bit of work or tick one more thing off my to-do list. That's actually the least courageous thing. The most courageous thing you could do would be to stop and recover and give yourself as long as you need to listen to what your body is saying. Because your body is part of your higher self. You know, sometimes, a lot of the time actually for me, I have to switch off and say, you know what, it might only be midday. I might only have done two hours of concentrating work, but my mind is frazzled. I am done. What would the highest version of me do right now? Take a break. Maybe do something with my hands. Do something physical. Or sit on my pants and watch Netflix whilst I eat cookies. We all need that. So... If you feel, you know, if you're stressed, you're fit, you're afraid or you're feeling doubt or you're just really tired, you don't always need to do more. In fact, most of the time and for most of the people I work with, doing more is the, I'm trying to think of the opposite word of courageous, the not courageous thing. So, finally. Abraham Maslow said, we all have an, uh, an option in any given moment. We we'll have a choice to st- either step uh, towards or step away from minus one, plus one, uh, our higher selves. Towards or away from our higher selves. And if you can ask yourself that question, 
can start to get into the habit of asking yourself that question. What would the highest version of me do right now? You will be taking steps constantly towards your highest self rather than away from your higher self. And if, you, if you've been in the habit of not doing that, you know, if you're an overachiever and you've been in the habit of constantly more asking yourself the question, how can I get more done? Um, how can I push myself harder? How can I be more efficient? How can I achieve more? How can I be more effective? How can I make more money? How can I get, garner more respect? How can I create a new goal? You've been stepping away from creating a gap between you and your higher self and that's painful uh, and that's that's misery that's that feeling of emptiness numbness being unplugged and we want to start to close that gap and come back to consistently feeling energy balance joy hope optimism courage and acting in those ways so lots to dig into there. Um, the takeaway for what I want for you is to just to start to experiment with asking yourself this question. What would the highest version of me do? Whether that's in this moment in response to a certain event or trigger or tomorrow or over the next week. If you're journaling, bring this question in every day, every single day. You know, Go on your phone, download uh, an hourly reminders app. Create that reminder, little, little sound, little reminder, mindfulness alarm to ask yourself this question. And experiment. Don't, don't, you don't have to do every... You don't, if you come up with, you know, what would the highest version of me do right now and you're in the office and you think, go and bungee jump, you don't have to do it. You, but, you, but starting to experiment and play with this and notice what kind of answers come up and bringing them to our next coaching session or writing them down and reflecting on them, you will start to see perhaps where some of the, the gaps are between where you are now and your higher self and where you want to be. All right, this was only meant to be a five minute video and it's been 22 minutes, so I'll stop here. Lots of love.